Today we're going to be creating a package in Arch Linux, and for this I have asked for some help from Big Pod, the man, the myth, the legend. How are you, sir? I'm doing great. How are you? I'm doing just fine. So, building an Arch package, is it complicated? Not uh, that complicated. Mm -hmm. Well, if it's not that complicated, I think you'll be able to talk me through it. So yeah, so what we'll be packaging is ST. Ah, the simple the terminal. terminal. Yeah, I like it. Yeah. Cyclist is a simple terminal. So if we look at uh, the ST folder I have here, directory, we can see I already have source pulled down, so we can look at it and see what what it uh, what it is. So for those people watching and maybe don't know exactly where you got the source. All you needed to do to get the source was to go to suckless.org and just download the source code for ST. Or you could have uh, got it with a git clone. Yeah, I got it with a git clone because we, we will use git to pull down the package during during the build process itself. Okay. Let's go while I'm up to the ST package directory I have set up here where we will create our package build file. So we can find a prototype of that file on your Arch systems. Okay. A directory. Let's just go look at it. Slash user share. And as we see, package build dot proto. And that's just an example package build for you for somebody to look at if who's never built a uh, one of these package builds in Arch before. It's a fully featured uh, file. Everything, everything you can, you would ever have is in there. Right. It's got all the options. Probably most of them you won't use. Yeah, most of them you shouldn't use, depending on what you what you have, what you want to do. Mm -hmm. You want to use specific ones and create them and use them by your for your own means. So let's just move. Uh, let's just copy this file to our work directory and to the ST package directory where we will do all the work. So now we, uh, I forgot to rename it. Oh yeah, you got to get rid of the uh, proto. Right. <laughs> proto, so now to edit it. So first off, we have a comment about uh, what, what this file is. We can remove that. The next part is the maintainer, uh, which is where you, you, you should fill, fill up your name, especially if you're going to upload that, this to uh, AUR. Right. Because they need to know some information about you. So they can hold you somewhat accountable if something happens. Well, if you uploaded Basically, your own personal build yeah. of ST and it broke, yeah, uh, somebody would have your email address and would be able to contact you they, and say, they can directly contact right. you if you don't answer to comments mm -hmm. under the under, in, in the site itself. So first is the package name. So we can do ST BigPot, for example. The next one is the version. This is where you enter uh, the version number. So this would be 0 0.8.1 for a specific version of SD, if I remember correctly. Right. Uh, um, package. Yeah, I think they're actually on 0 0.8.2. Oh, 0 0.8.2. I, I could be. Let's be correct about it. Well, I will double check. Yeah, I just checked it 0 0.8.2. 0 0.8.2. Okay. So package rel is or package release is if you if you wanna rebuild the package, let's say you made a mistake, let's say in a build script you forgot to do something. Right. It can happen. You you just increment the package package rel mm. so you don't have to give it a new version. Right. Maybe maybe you change something in the README, right? It's not really a new package version, but you want to package up a yeah. second time. Right. Now the next one, the epoch, should be thrown out immediately. It is, it is not used a lot. It's used in specific cases whenever you absolutely need, whether 
package where or package rail variables cannot be cannot be enough to specify the version of it or some some sort of variation of the package as a version of it then you should use epoch so we should just control k since we are in nano the next one is package what what he meant guys was dd if you're in vim yeah but yeah control k in nano delete the whole line basically <laughs> so next one is package description where you type a small or large however you want description of your package for example this is my build of st so the next one is arch or architecture of the package so this would be so, where uh, you would specify i386 or x86 or arm yeah. Yeah. yeah depending on which the specific package is built for and this would be important, yeah. for example, if I wanted to download BigPod's build of ST and run it on my Raspberry Pi. Well, if it doesn't build correctly on ARM, that would be a problem. Yeah. So, yeah. so let's go with x86-64, since that is what we have. URL variable is where the, where the URL to source or some other... Uh, some other close component to the where actually get the package should be should be set. So for us that means which is where we will put the this should be clone. This should be where the source is. Yeah. 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 Mostly the correctly the source, but sometimes they put uh, like the if it's a proprietary or pre-built package, the location of the package itself or at least part of the URL. Yeah. But yeah. So, it would be strange to be building a proprietary package, but yeah, I, I get your point. On AOR, yeah. not so strange. Well, actually, Ar actually, Arch doesn't care that much. You're right. Yeah, I, you, know. it, you have it, proprietary packages even in the actual and the repos. Yeah. Arch repositories, for example, mm -hmm. Discord. That's right. Yeah. So next one is a license. Under what which license? Uh, uh, I believe they use uh, MIT or BSD. I know the suckless guys are anti GPL, so I know. Let us check the license. Yeah, we'd better double check. This MIT. MIT, yeah. License, yeah. So then next one is groups, which is uh, what, what if this package belongs to a group. If, for example, you have uh, a group of packages in Arch, for example, I believe base devel which is the one right. you need to actually run AOR, AOR packages to download them and um, build them. That's correct, yeah. That one is, I believe it's actually a group. The other option is a meta package, which is basically a package that doesn't have any build or Well, it would be like package, those but are... it has other dependencies, it's everything listed. Yeah. So oh, what no, he's talking no about is it's like it, you have these meta packages in yeah. most distributions that are really groups of packages. Yeah. Because here have two options. I right. have two options. You can either have groups, which is a somewhat cleaner solution. Mm -hmm. On the other hand, you can have meta packages. Mm -hmm. I believe the base is actually a meta package. Yeah. The one you you always install when you do uh, Arch install from from by hand. Mm -hmm. You always have to. You don't have to install base package. And that's going to include things like make and everything you need to actually build something like what we're doing uh, today. Base base doesn't include everything to build. Base includes your whole system. Like the uh, core utils and all that. Yeah. yeah. While base devel, base dash devel is the second second uh, group that you, you must have to run AUR uh, to build AUR packages. While the make make package uh, command we will use later is actually a part of the the Pacman uh, installation, so it's already part of the. It's part of the package the manager, right? Base. Yeah, yeah, it's part of part of the base mm -hmm. package. So because we won't be a part of any groups, we can just DD it. <laughs> and it's done in Vim. Yeah. Now. Depends is if your package depends on some other package, it must be used to run. So for, I can say for sure, because I, I can already tell what you're going to do with ST, you're going to git clone it. So git would be a dependency, for example. No, that would be wrong. What you need to run the package with, uh, 
without building it. So do you need ah. an assist on the system to run the, the SD? Okay. Um, do we need any dependencies on the system? Probably nothing that wouldn't be there on any core install of any distro. So depends is not needed right. in this case. Mm -hmm. But we will leave it in because you never know. You never know, right? While the make depends yep. is actually everything you need to build a package. So for so git make. Yeah. And I would assume like I would assume make would be on most. But yeah, yeah, you probably should specify it just in case. To specify it is in cases mm -hmm. it, uh, it doesn't have. Let me just double check something here because you never know. You see different packages with different um, types of how they how they uh, input this whole. Like you can have it with quotes, mm -hmm. and then you can actually specify version. But I'm I'm not sure of something. And uh, check. just to clarify a little bit for those uh, again that may be a little confused about the make dependencies. How you would find the make dependencies is. Me and Big Pod have actually built ST from source on our system. And the make dependencies are the commands, I guess, that you would actually use. To yeah, build. Any, and right. any libraries you would need if you actually right. wanted to build. For for example, let's say something like, uh, I don't know, a package would require, let's say, libnotify or something like that. Right. Library that wouldn't otherwise be installed. Or mm -hmm. Probably that one probably be something something with a uh, dew at the end mm -hmm. that package isn't required if you actually have a uh, if you actually have a other package mm -hmm. but yeah but if you have the original library but it for building it must be there all right so you can do it with sing single quotes to uh, tell it if you want to say add a version beside it so we'll say it must be equal to let's say version 6 or version 8 or uh, the version must be greater than let's say 6.1 of the specific dependency but if you if you just want to package do it with quotes and you don't need uh anything between two packages just space like it's like it's written here so the next one as we see is check dependencies this one is actually I never use this one. It is almost never used as far as I see. It's uh, basically. Uh, so this is when you do like a make check or what is this? This one is this one is for the tests. Okay. So if you have like a unit test or a Selenium web driver test for your applications, so it automatically tests if everything actually works. That would be where you put the check depends. I already put those dependencies for, let's say, I know in uh, in C sharp world you have you have to have certain packages to build, and then a different package to actually test those what you built. So you you put that package here. Right. But since we won't do any unit tests, we can remove this line. Yeah. And, and I imagine most packages people will build probably won't need the won't, check dependencies. Won't do. Right. Won't do unit tests yeah mm -hmm. now op depends is actually optional dependencies if here is where you see during the install where it says to you you might want to install this package because it provides this right uh, it's basically a depend it's not a hard dependency like the package will work but there's some extra functionality that would work if you had this installed alongside it basically yeah mm -hmm. So now pro provides is that an array which tells uh, you mo you and the system which additional packages the software will provide. So let's say if it provides an additional command, you can state them here. And, um, and it goes hand in hand with the next one, conflicts, which tells if it conflicts, conflicts with any package, let's say, uh, well, for example. Well, we can talk about yours. ST-BigPod is going to conflict with ST. Because you will, yeah. you were, you will overwrite the default if they already had it installed. And if if nothing else, it will, it will override the bin file in slash mm -hmm. slash user bin. So you don't have to type st dash big pot. Right. So it will conflict in that. 
but actually that would probably go in replaces, right. which, which, tell, which tells you which packages this one replaces. So for example, it replaces uh, the ordinary ST. All right. So if you have it installed with the, with the package manager itself, it will, it will automatically ask you if you want to remove that package. Okay, so, so. Uh, conflicts we, we won't be needing for, for ST because it doesn't really conflict with anything. Yeah, here we could define ST as a command it will provide. We can replace, you can remove both conflict and replace. Now the backup is the array, which says what, what changes remain should be preserved during upgrade or removal of the package. So basically they, they should be either copied away from where removing or should be put still still left in place. This is used primarily for configuration files in slash exit right. directory. So even if you remove you, your configuration files are still left intact. Right, so if you installed a package and something was messed up, you've got a backup of that that old config you had? Is that basically what yeah, it's? Yeah, basically, basically it leaves the files intact. Right. So if let's say you go, Delete, it wouldn't delete the configuration file. In, in if you use the Ubuntu example, if you just go remove, mm -hmm. it won't remove the conf configurations. You must go purge. Okay. So the app purge, so it will actually completely remove e everything that, that is provided by the package. So next one is options, which overrides some of the default behavior of make package. Uh, which is defined in the uh, configuration file in slash it slash make package dot conf, but that is again mainly not used. So now install is the one that is like pretty frequently used if you have after install scripts. Okay. Let's say, for example, the first package that comes to mind is the uh, uh, what it, fonts for Microsoft fonts? <laughs> yeah, the core fonts. Yeah, yeah. You want to have a, a right away that it shows you if you want to accept the license. Yeah, you have to uh, read the EULA and agree to you it. Have, yeah. You have you have the post install script, which is defined inside the file defined here. It will have a post script, post install script or a function where you actually tell it. What you wanna, what you wanna run as a, for it, for example, you wanna, you wanna run the, what is what it provides for, for you to do, EULA to read EULA and do license agreement. So any kind of uh, package install that requires some kind of interaction with the user, yeah, is, you, you yeah. need this, okay? Yeah, that must be done after the, uh, inst the installation is complete. Okay. So we won't do any of this. Now change lock is the is the file that provides a simple change change lock change lock changes for you to uh, see if you do pacman qc and the package name. So this is one of the commands in, of the pacman has where you can see what changes have been made to the system or more specifically the package itself. But if I'm truly be told, I haven't, haven't seen a, lo a lot of use of this, yeah, of this uh, variable in AOR packages. I doubt too many people care about the change log. Yeah, it's, uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's it's probably mainly used in official packages. Mm -hmm. So we will remove it. Now, source is the one that's actually important because this is the part that will actually install the or download the sources for the package. So this would be where you specify what, like the the Git uh, URL uh, or what it uses, and you uh, give it the URL. Yes. So okay, this is the part that that is a bit harder because for Git there is a bit of different uh, part you have to do. So let me just grab it from the internet okay so what you have to write here for git for git specific is git 
plus and then the URL. So we should we can just use the variable URL we, we defined above. But we forgot something. We forgot double quotes here and here. So no extract is if you if you don't want the package extracted. So let's say you you want to uh, you have a package, but you don't want it to be extracted into, in any way. So this is for say, you're downloading an say, archive, like a, a zip or a tar or something. Yeah. GZ. Right. For a, many proprietary packages are mm -hmm. are loaded in a tar GZ for Linux. So those are those maybe you don't want want it uh, extracted during this part. Okay. Because it might be part of the build process itself. Mm -hmm. So it would be just remove this part, DD it. So by default, now, by default, it extracts or it doesn't extract. What's the default behavior? Default, it is extracts during okay. right after it pulls it down. All right. So now we have the SHA sum or MD5 sum in this case. Here we can have different checksums. For in this example, we see MD5 sums. And I, have I, I can already tell shot. you some, some people watching the video are going to scream and say MD5 is not secure yeah. enough. You shouldn't be using it. So, uh, hey, so I'm glad you mentioned you can use something else because <laughs> there are multiple checksums you can use. Mm -hmm. uh, the system provides multiple. Well, that is all depending on what uh, the, the software you actually are packaging will provide. But for this case, MD5 is still good enough to actually use as as a checksum do you have to include a checksum no this is special use for with git packages because okay. git packages don't have a checksum okay uh just to go back to the checksums part i was talking about the security of it md5 absolutely shouldn't be used to to hash passwords this is where many people go wrong mm -hmm. why it is somewhat safe to use as a checksum of a file where if, if it's possible you should use at least one or at least two one it's good to use yeah. you have absolute probability it's actually correct even though you you could be having a problem since maybe the 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 person who actually attacked the site and got the wrong got the malicious package installed uh, into the server also got to the website itself right. and and uh, change the SHA sum so they are correct. So, well, well I, I would have no problem like using MD5 here for like yeah. a, a package build, but I know so many people talk bad about MD5. I know in the comments of this video, yeah. <laughs> there are going to be some. <laughs> I'll say again, MD5 is not secure <laughs> right. as a password yeah. hashing algorithm, which I was, some websites still use. I was trying to preempt the comments, right? Yeah. <laughs> That's what yeah. I, all right. <laughs> Same thing here. Explain the difference between the two. For that, you should probably use something like SHA, SHA, I believe SHA 3. At least SHA 512, if not even the newer generation of SHA. But for us, since we're using Git, we can just do skip. We just automatically skip the, the checksum. Okay. Now, the next one is valid PGP key. Again, this is to, to check the package. And, and we don't, again, we don't have, so we can just remove it. This one is not necessary. Now we come to the functions which used to do scripts. So there are four, four functions here. Prepare, build, check, and package. Prepare is meant if you're gonna do patches, as you already see an example here. And will in our case not be used since we're not actually patching anything in ST. But we could do that to make our source, our AR package more distinct. So in our case, we can just remove it. Now the build is important because we must also go to see what must must build the package basically. In our case, we're gonna do just make. Well, just bef before you go further, most people, I'm assuming most people that have watched this video are, or have built something from source before and have used the standard 
three commands, configure, yeah. make, make install. And people can see, see the build process involves, yeah. in, at least in the prototype here, configure and make, and then later package will do the make install. Yeah. So I just wanted to throw that out there. But uh, that, not all packages use that format, so you would have to insert the yeah. commands to use to build your, your own package. This is a standard process many Linux packages use, but newer packages, especially from languages like C Sharp with uh, its .NET Core, with uh, its .NET command to build, or Go with its own compiler, you can still make the make make file, but I don't see it a lot. Same goes with Python and its setup setup tools, right. and many other packages. Many are even. You know, for some C and C++, you don't see make files nowadays. Mm -hmm. Why? I'm, I'm, not, I'm not understanding why, but it happens. Okay. Yeah, I just wanted so, to, to throw that out there. That the yeah. example includes just the standard configure, make, make, install. But if, unless you build your package with those commands, you have to change this to the correct commands. So. Yes. Now at this point, we have, we, uh, we got, Skip right now f wh wh what we want to put in there, so we can go through the to the functions itself. We can see the check function here. It's it's what I was referring to earlier as unit tests. In this function, you do those unit tests. Since you don't have any any checks for this package, we're not gonna do any checks. Now the final one is package, which is with, with which you put the files into the pseudo file system uh, make package provides command package command provides which is uh, this pseudo pack file system is is accessed by variable package here as you see here okay and actually this this one should be enough if we are very well now because you yeah. were already in uh, in the build, yeah. you already CD'd into that yeah. directory, so you don't have to do it a second time. Actually, here I have to anyway change it, so because I believe it just just does a package. But uh, at this point, I got to refer to you what exactly you must do with for build of ST. ST does not require a configure or a make; it just requires a make install. Really? You don't yes. need to even compile it? No. I, so, I, well, check the... Uh, I, I think the make file is already there if you check the... Uh, yeah. But you don't have to do a yeah. make. A sudo make install is all you need to do for a fresh install. Nice. That that makes, that makes it easy, right? <laughs> really easy. Uh. You can even remove the build part of it. Uh. And we can go... We can just go cd, which is... Actually, here we're going to do cdst since our package is differently named than the directory it will pull down. Okay. Uh, here I got to point out that uh, if you don't have make installed, there are different options what to use because you have to do it by hand. Mm -hmm. You can use either install command, which is provided by core, uh, GNU core utils, right. which replaces files but makes sure they can still the old ones can still be accessed. So let's say if you're running, for example, Firefox, and it updates in the middle of the, you're running it, mm -hmm. you will still you will still be able to use the old version of Firefox until you close it. Okay. But as soon as you close it, you will it will open up the, the new, new version, version. Yeah. of Firefox. So what what here is under make with this dir which defines where this should be which this should be installed as a as in the base file system so since we're going to have to access the package dir pseudo file system which basically is basically our root of the package so if let's say we need a file in slash opata okay this will be uh, package dir slash opata okay. and well and for our native english speakers slash opt yeah right that and what that is on the linux file system slash opt is where typically anything you build from source yourself outside of your package manager you throw it in that directory yes yeah, well, many many 
even use it for the pack, package manager if, if they're like outside packages like yep. for AUR. Oh, I've, I've installed AU. I, I've installed AUR packages that put it in in slash opt. So especially uh, if you don't want to mess with the the files other file system, which right. can be in some cases kind of messy if you don't if you don't exactly know what you're doing. Mm -hmm. That's why I normally, if I don't have make file, I will normally go with opt file as a base. Okay. Now this should be enough. We gonna clear the screen so we see more nicely, and we're gonna just type in make package. This should create a package. It did the git clone and it built it. Wow. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Now let's see. Okay. It does create a pa package file. The package, the package file is every file that it act, that ends with dot package dot tar dot exe. Mm -hmm. Tar dot exe is the arch archive format it uses. Okay. And package you don't know that it's a it's a Arch Linux package. So if you now go sudo pacman dash u to install local package mm -hmm. st dash Big pot, and it will. If we tab it, we're gonna see the whole package. And we do it now. I have to enter my sudo password. And yeah, oh, huh? It's complaining about the man page. What is it complaining? Yes, about? that would be probably yeah. because it somehow uh, the man page is somehow got got around the uh, that's dear. Mm -hmm. That's my my guess. So let's just check in slash user share user local share man. Okay. And it's an empty directory, which means it tries to create that directory. So you're just gonna remove it that way when you build the package yeah, it'll it's create empty. it. Okay. It's empty, so we can do that. Okay. Let me just move up so I have to write this whole command and let's just install it again. And it installs correctly. Okay. And if you just launch ST, you just go with the, de the whole desktop. Okay. And see that's, ST that installed. Is... All right. Well, that was easy enough, huh? But that's not the end <laughs> of the story if you want to wanna put it to, to uh, AUR. All right, so how do we go about packaging your ST build for the AUR? Uh, the package is, is already fine, the package build file, but what we need is a dot source info file. That file we need because the the information you see on the on the AUR site about the package is pulled from this dot source info file. But why is that? Couldn't we just pull it from the package build file, you would ask. That would be because, as they say, it is quite dangerous to uh, do the the parsing of the of the of the scripts if you have if maybe somebody would want to actually hack those servers, you could you could possibly do it through that. Okay. It's a basically security measure. So what you require is a is this command. I'm gonna just paste it in make package dash dash prints src info okay so and then you just that, and then you just direct that uh, that yeah, output to source okay. info file all right if we just do it and look now none of that file we can see what it provides it provides the yeah that was easy enough information yeah. well that's nice that it just auto generates it for you yeah so. It is safe to do a parsing on your own system since why would you want to hack your own system? Right. Now, ha oh, th this is where the all of it's all ready for being uploaded to AUR. Okay. Well, that was really easy, Big Pod. It seems like anybody can make a package for Arch Linux. Yeah, almost anybody can do it. Yeah. It's actually really useful to do if. If you, let's say you have your own applications mm -hmm. and you have to install them on many many computers, like two, three, four computers. Like I have I have couple of couple of things I install on on two of my machines. I 
do not want to every time build it from source. Yes. Matter of fact, uh, so I made a repository myself. I was sitting here thinking and, the same thing. Uh, we, we were talking about building packages so you could put it in the Arch repositories, but you don't have to do that. You could just have your own packages just for your own personal use, and you can just sideload them with you know the the Pacman yeah, package manager. You, Pac-Man. you don't have to you share them. Find, yeah, you don't have to share them yeah, with the public. You can just have your yes. own build of ST, for example, and it's just yours. You know, you're not putting it out there for anybody. Yeah, yeah, I. I think this is actually a nice, clean solution to yeah. having your, your own packages. Yeah. It's definitely easier than some other. Yeah, um, I, I could see packaging up things like, especially we were talking about ST today, the suckless tools, my own D menu and DWM and everything. As long as I've got that uh, that package build for it. Uh, for example, if I if I may, hmm? the Arco Arco guys, the Eric Dwine, his team, they actually. Uh, they actually make a package for each configuration they they do. So basically, for let's say example, NeoFetch, they have their own configuration files. Mm-hmm. They actually have a package in their own repositories yes. to get when you install mm-hmm. Arco. That is basically NeoFetch configuration. Right. It's, you do it's, that, then you automatically get their configuration files. Yeah. 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 Well, you know, I'm a big fan of Arco, but yeah, I love the fact that they, they have their own configuration files for everything, really. And it's pretty convenient. It's just in a package form. So mm-hmm. if, for example, you just add the, if even if you do Majara or or straight art, you can just uh, install their uh, their repositories into your yeah. Pacman conf file, and there you go. Yeah, as, or a matter of fact, as long as you got the package build, right? You could just... yeah. yeah. Or you could make it yourself. Mm-hmm. Right. All right, Big Pod. Well, I appreciate you uh, walking me through the steps for creating a package in Arch. This was fun. Maybe we'll get together in the future and maybe build some other package formats. I know we've talked about, you know, doing some things like maybe a snap pack in the future. Or, you know, if we're really ambitious, maybe an app image. I I, I don't know. We'll, we'll come up with some other stuff, though. Yeah. All right. And Thank- maybe some more challenging package to yeah. To make into a package and for those watching the video where can where can they find you big pod they can find me on youtube under the channel name big pod all right and uh, as of as of few days ago they can find me on library nice under the again under the channel name big pod very cool there's too, too many ways you can find <laughs> me but you can also find me on mastodon again big pod where i sometimes hang out if they Google Big Pod, they should be able to find you. Probably they could find me somewhere. All right. All right. Thanks, Big Pod. Never tried. <laughs> Google yeah. myself like that. Duck, duck, go, maybe. Oh, duck, duck, go it. Yeah. All right. Maybe. All right. Appreciate your time, Big Pod. Thanks for the help. Yeah. Thank you for having me.